Hi, this is Lila, and my topic is the excretory system in flatworms, earthworms, and vertebrates. Before we dive into exploring how the system works in these types of organisms, let's first define the function of the excretory system. Your body is constantly taking in material such as food, and your cells are also constantly producing material byproducts. And a critical bodily function is a system that eliminates or discharges waste and unneeded materials. That is the function of the excretory system. Put more eloquently, its function is to eliminate waste and nitrogen waste products, eradicate harmful chemical buildups, and maintain homeostasis. The excretory system essentially maintains homeostasis by ridding the body of these waste products, as well as excess water so that the body is not polluted or overcome by materials that it does not need. Interestingly, the excretory system works rather closely with the digestive system to provide essential biological activities. The digestive system breaks down and extracts nutrients from materials inputted into the body, such as food. Once the system has run its course, the excretory system acts almost like a final step in digestion. By excreting waste products from the digestive system through defecation and urination, so that such waste products don't accumulate in the gut. In the human body, the kidneys are especially important. They filter metabolic waste, excess ions, and chemicals from the blood to form urine, which is then held in the bladder and excreted from the urethra. The kidneys also monitor and regulate the levels of hydrogen ions in the blood to control pH levels. The kidneys excrete excess H plus ions into urine to eliminate them from the body so that the blood does not become too acidic. Through this H plus ion excretion, the excretory system helps to maintain bodily pH so that the digestive system can continue to function, as this digestive system essentially would not be able to optimally function when the blood is too acidic, as certain digestive enzymes could denature in acidic environments. Now let's go on to our first actual organism, the flatworm. Well, the flatworms have an excretory system consisting of two or more long tubules that run the length of their body. These tubes open up through either pores on the surface of the flatworm or through more defined holes. Something interesting about the flatworm excretory system is that their excretory tubules end in bulb-shaped cells called flame cells, which are covered in cilia projections that move to create a sort of current that moves waste out of the flatworm system. The flatworm's excretory system is essentially perfectly tailored to its body, as they are unsegmented and lack circulatory systems. So their flame cells and excretory tubules allow flatworms to pick up waste directly from their bodily tissues and quickly dispose of it. Now onto our next organism, earthworms. Earthworms differ from flatworms in that they are unsegmented. Therefore, their excretory system is far more complex. Earthworms do have a circulatory system that works in conjunction with its excretory system, which, like the flatworm, is also composed of long tubules. Earthworms produce urea as a waste product that is collected in a structure called a nephridium. Fluid waste from earthworm tissues are collected at the nephridium, where blood circulates around the structure that, so that some of the water can be reabsorbed back into the blood, maximizing the earthworm's fluid retention. Whatever is left is collected in the bladder and expelled through a pore. What is interesting about the earthworm's excretory system is that the nephridium allows for the earthworm to reabsorb nutrients and fluids from its waste products in a way that the flatworm system never allowed it to. This may be due to the earthworm's habitat, Unlike the flatworm, which usually only survives underwater or in incredibly moist environments, the earthworm typically resides in soil, where the environment is not as moist as marine environments, and there is a need for the earthworm to retain more fluids. The flatworm, on the other hand, has a near constant supply of fluids, so it doesn't need this retention system. Further, the earthworm is a decomposer, meaning it feeds on dead and decaying materials to break these things down and extract nutrients from them. The nephridium's reabsorption system acts almost like a safeguard to make sure that the earthworm has completely extracted as many nutrients from its food that it possibly can to best break it down back into the simplest materials. Now on to vertebrates. Vertebrates excrete one of three waste products depending on their location and niche, ammonia, urea, 
and uric acid. As noted on the figure to the right, most fish and aquatic animals and mammals secrete ammonia. Adult amphibians, sharks, and mammals excrete urea, and insects, birds, and reptiles excrete a substance called uric acid. But what's the point of this differentiation? Well, ammonia is very toxic, in part because its ion form actually interferes with oxidative phosphorylation. Although some animals can excrete ammonia directly, many species actually expend energy to convert it to a less toxic compound, either urea or uric acid, prior to excretion. Animals that excrete nitrogenous waste like ammonia need access, or access rather, to lots of water because ammonia can be tolerated only at very low concentrations, as again, it is rather toxic, which is a very key component in determining what type of excretory waste an animal is going to produce. Therefore, ammonia excretion is most common in aquatic species such as fish or aquatic mammals. So essentially, these animals can excrete ammonia without fear of its toxicity because it dissipates in the water so quickly. Most terrestrial animals, and actually many marine species, cannot afford to lose the amount of water necessary for routine ammonia excretion. Instead, they mainly excrete a different nitrogenous waste product, urea. The main advantage of urea for waste production, is or rather excretion, is its very, very low toxicity. And frankly, the toxicity compounds and the toxicity makeup of an excretory waste is incredibly important. But lastly, the, nest, the last nitrogenous waste product, uric acid, is relatively non-toxic and does not really dissolve in water. It can therefore be excreted as a sort of paste-like material with very little water loss. However, uric acid is even more energetically expensive to produce than urea. As you move farther and farther away from ammonia excretion, you'll have to expend more energy to detoxify the waste product while still maintaining water retention. Okay, thank you guys so much.